Hello and welcome to another Forward Cameras Camera Tutorials. Today we're going to learn how to use this Pentax Spotmatic. The Pentax Spotmatic was from the 60s to the 70s. It's an SLR, meaning it's a single lens reflex camera. For those of you who are unfamiliar with that concept, when you look inside the viewfinder, you see exactly what goes through the lens. There's a mirror inside that pops up and down, um, allowing the viewer to see exactly, I um, mean, compose the photo exactly. Now, how do we use this camera? Um, we're gonna talk about that, and we're gonna talk about some of its um, unique features. Now, um, the first thing to know is that this camera takes screw mount lenses, um, and Particularly, um, the type of lens that was made for this camera is called the Super Takumar lens made by Pentax, but you could actually buy many, many different types of screw mount lenses, which makes this a unique camera, um, and it makes it very versatile. Usually, these types of lenses aren't very um, expensive either, which makes it a, a great choice for students or just anyone who really wants to get into photography. Um, I find that Pentax made some of the best cameras. They're super, super reliable. Um, some of these have gone through the Vietnamese War and all sorts of different experiences and they've came back um, under really harsh conditions, so uh, very reliable cameras. Now, uh, let's take a look at some of these features. Now, in order to remove the lens, it's extremely easy. Sometimes on these SLRs, there'd be a button, right, to press down, but because this is a screw mount lens, it just screws right up. So you hold the body of the camera and you hold the lens and then you go counterclockwise and it comes right off, see? And notice what I mean by screw mount lens, so I'm gonna actually let you take a look, is it has these, it looks like a screw because it's basically one giant screw that goes right onto the body of the SLR. It also has a little aperture closing and opening, right? Um, and with this particular Super Takumar lens, right, um, it has a setting called, and this confuses a lot of people, but I want to teach you, right? It has a setting called Auto, and then you could switch it to what it says Man or Manual. So what does this mean? It doesn't mean that it's an automatic camera, like cameras from the 80s and beyond, right? Or even in the 70s, they had some automatic cameras, but what it means is the aperture, right? The aperture will change automatically when you take the photo. And for those of you who don't know what aperture is, it's the kind of, I, this sort of, this is the aperture, right? It closes and opens inside the camera, um, inside the lens of the camera to restrict the light and um, to have a certain focus, right? Now, if I put it on manual, if I switch this to manual and I change my aperture ring, right, from a small aperture, which is 16, right, down to like two, right? So right now, number one, it's not gonna do anything. But when I when I move back, notice, right, it stops down, it stops the aperture down automatically. Um, at manual, it holds it there. Um, so this is really just for the photographer to have a better depth of field, right? Um, to see it and it will actually restrict the light inside the camera. So I keep it, I always keep it on auto. And I, and I make sure that these lenses are nice and clean, right? Um, you wanna make sure that you clean your apertures um, and you don't let oil get involved because it won't stop down properly. So let's put this lens back on our camera. All right, now it's back on the camera and I switch it to auto, which I have here. Okay. Right. Um, so the next thing that I wanna talk about, and I'll make sure your camera's inside the frame here, is the top. Okay, so what are the features of the top of this camera? Well, for those of you who are unfamiliar with using you know, manual SLRs, um, this is known as the shutter speed. So when I change this ring, right, to a thousand, 
What that means is the camera is going to take a photo at one one thousandth of a second, really, really fast. And as I go further downward, one five hundred of a second, so on and so forth, all the way down to half a second. And then one is one second, so it, a very long exposure. And then B um, is called bulb. And basically what that means is um, the photographer for, could keep manually keep the camera open as long as they want for their exposure. So this is ideal if you have a very, very dark setting like nighttime and you want to take a photo at night and you want to take the photo for longer than a second, you can manually hold this button down with your finger, which I don't recommend. I'd actually use something that can screw in there to kind of hold the photo and hold the camera open for however long you want so um, to take the proper exposure. Um, the other thing that I want to uh, point out is that this is uh, two wheels in one. This is two wheels in one, believe it or not. So the first wheel was we changed the shutter speed. And the second wheel is, um, and I'm going to show you right now, if I zoom in here, notice that there's this little teeny number here. And it says ASA. Well, for those of you who know what ISO is with digital cameras, right? Um, it's the same idea, right? For film, you have a certain film speed and you set it in there so that the exposure is proper. Um, and in this case, uh, we have a film speed of 400 ISO or ASA, but you could change that by lifting up the ring and moving it, see, to whatever film speed there is on your film canister, right? Usually minus 400, it's the, you know, the most versatile, but there's all sorts of different speeds depending upon what film you're using. This is a little bit archaic over here, right? If you wanna remind yourself you're using color film, you could turn this wheel. If you wanna say I'm using black and white film, you could turn the wheel um, and you could remind yourself with the little arrow this is also the rewind wheel, right? That you turn to rewind the film back inside the cartridge when you're done. Um, and how would you do that? Let's just say we're done with all our photos, right? We took our photos and we wanna rewind. Well, number one, you open up this little latch here. You turn the camera around and notice on the bottom of the camera, there's a little button. So you would press the little button down and it stays down. And what you would do is you would crank, 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 keep cranking, right? And eventually there's no more uh, tension, you'll feel it. And that means that all of the film went from this side back into the canister for you to develop, you close it, and then you would open the camera. So um, I didn't actually talk about how to use the camera in terms of taking photos, which I wanna do right now. So. Another thing I want to talk about is you want to change the aperture, right, to get the correct exposure. Well, how do we do that? Well, this, this aperture ring, right, that we would change to like 16, right? Um, maybe we want a sharper picture of the entire horizon or you would want to restrict the light to a smaller aperture, right? And then you would kind of move it to a bigger aperture in settings where there's less light or you want to... Uh, to have a very fuzzy background and kind of a sharp image of a small part of the photo. Um, for those of you who are interested in how uh, Aperture can help you compose your photo, uh, there will be other videos posted which we can talk about that. Um, but this is mainly for learning how to use the camera. So the other thing that is very important about this cam learning how to use this particular camera is that we need to compose the photo in here. We start, right? We notice that this tells us we're at zero. That means that there's no photos that have been taken so far. We use our right hand, we crank it forward and notice that this bar moved over one. That means we're on the first frame, okay? So now we would be on the first frame once our film is inside. Um, we would make sure that we put a battery at the very beginning down here, right? We would open this up with the coin and put um, a recommended battery. Uh, I forgot the exact battery, I could post it later, um, but it's, it's very easy to get online. 
um, and then our light meter would work. And we switch the light meter on with this switch over here, SW. So we would push the light meter up, right? Keep it locked um, and to turn it off so we don't waste battery when we're not using the camera, we push it back down, okay? Um, and our light meter's on, for instance, right? We cranked our camera and inside of the camera, inside of our camera, right? Very important, inside the camera, there's a little sort of um, meter that goes up and down and we want that meter to be in the middle um, so that we know that our photo is being properly exposed and how do we do that well it depends on what sort of photo you would like to take so some of us might want to focus on how fast the object's going so if we're talking about like a sporting event a sporting event we want to make this like one one thousandth or one over five hundred right of a second and then change our aperture according and look at the little bar to make sure it's balanced in the middle um, so that we get the correct exposure. Or if you wanna do something called aperture priority, maybe you wanna set your aperture, your depth of field first, and then switch this until the little level is in the center, right? So that we know when it's centered, either which way you compose your photo, it's gonna have the proper exposure. And all we have to do is frame our photo and we're going to click the little shutter button at the top and then notice that it works, right? So um, what do I want to talk about next? Well, what if you have a tripod and you want to set this up on a tripod and take photos of yourself and your friends? You can do that with the timer. So what you do is you take your thumb or your finger you move the timer back, right? And you set this camera up on a tripod. Um, you frame your photo with your friends and then you wind and you click the shutter button, but notice, oh, sorry, you click the shutter button, but you don't click the shutter button. Sorry, I made a mistake. You let the camera take the photo, right? I'll do it again. I made a mistake with this, right? So you, Cock this down, that's the timer. You move this lever back. You never press this. Some cameras do that, but I made a mistake. And you press this button here instead, sorry. And watch. And it gives you time to go to take, to be in the photo. And it should take your photo. See, and now it took the photo. Um, some other interesting things that I wanna talk about. Well, Number one, um, these cameras are built like tanks. Notice some of them have taken a bit of a pounding. This one seems to have, you know, maybe it had some water on it at some point, but it works like really, really well, even though it's had a little bit of a fair share of water or something on top of it. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I've had many, many, many of these Pentax cameras and I've almost never had any issues with them, regardless of what they look like because they're built super, super well. Um, this, notice that this actually went to picture number three or four, and it'll keep doing that. And when you're done, depending on how many photos you have in your roll, it could be 24 or 36, right? Um, once that tells you that, you don't want to keep winding because there'll be no photos and you'll double expose, you'll break your film. But you rewind the thumb, right? You open up the lever, and then you click the button on the bottom like I showed you before, right? And you wind, 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 wind. And when you're done winding, it's back inside. You unlock it by, and you could also use the same technique, right, by opening this back to put the film inside. It pops open. Inside, there'll be the film canister here. You would remove it, right? It unlocks it, the little lock here, goes in and out of the film canister. And to put film inside, right, you would open it like we did before. You put the film canister in and you reel the film nice and neat around the back and into the spool here. There's a little hole inside of the spool to feed the film. And then you click it down and you would just kind of like move it one frame. So it brings it into that reel and it makes it nice and flush. So you're ready to take your photo, right? Um, and notice that there's a curtain here. You never want to touch that or, you know, try to clean the curtain because it will mess it up. Uh, 
any sort of cleaning products on the curtain could really damage the curtain. So be careful, right? Um, or do it very, very gently. And then, you know, it locks. So you would close it. And notice it locks and it's nice and tight so that there's no light leaks. And that's how we use the Pentax Spotmatic or these sort of similar Pentax from the same era. Now, um, we have an online shop forwardcameras.com where we sell cameras just like this including this one um we also sell vintage tech we sell prints and we sell a number of other accessories and items which i hope you would uh follow us also on instagram at forward cameras on twitter at forward cameras check out our selection and stay tuned please subscribe to our youtube channel and like us um, and that keeps this channel going thank you